Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to theCUBE, day three of our live coverage from Dell Technologies World 2019 continues. Lisa Martin with my co-host Stu Miniman and we're welcoming to theCUBE for the first time, Michael St. John, Principal Marketing Manager for Red Hat Storage. Michael, welcome. Thanks Lisa, hi Stu. So day three, yeah. this event is still pretty loud around us. This has about, we're hearing upwards of 15,000 people, yes. a lot of partners. Give us your perspective on Dell Technologies World 2019. I, I got to tell you, this is, this is an awesome show. I got to tell you, the energy, in not, not just in the sessions, but out on the show floor as well, it's amazing. And you know, some of the conversations that we've been having out there around things like emerging, emerging technologies, emerging uh, work, workflows, uh, around artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, things like that. And, and you know, the, the whole adoption around hybrid cloud, it really you know, speaks to all of the things that we're doing, the initiatives that we're leading at Red Hat. So it's a, it's a great validation of all of the things that we've been working on for the past you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And you have a long-standing relationship with Dell. Oh yeah, 18 absolutely. years or so? Yeah, yeah, we've, uh, we've had a, not just a long relationship, but a very collaborative relationship with Dell over the past 18 years. Uh, it's, um, you know, it's something like, if, if you take a look at some of the initiatives that we've been working on, uh, we have uh, ready architectures around OpenStack, uh, around OpenShift, uh, we uh, have just, uh, we, we have uh, highlighting a few things uh, here around Microsoft SQL Server, around SAP HANA, uh, and uh, actually we, uh, we are really talking a lot around uh, OpenShift and um, a, a ready architecture that we've developed. We have architecture guides, deployment guides, all around OpenShift and OpenShift container storage for, um, for uh, Dell hardware. And uh, actually next week at, um, at our uh, Red Hat Summit event, uh, you should really take a look on Wednesday morning, our keynote, uh, our EVP, Paul Cormier will be talking about some great new, very interesting uh, initiatives that we've been working with Dell on. All right, well, well Michael, I'm excited. We're going to have the Cube at Red Hat Summit in Boston. It's our sixth year there. I'll be one of the hosts there. John Waltz right. will be there with me. We're going to have Paul Cormier on the program, <laughs> Jim Whitehurst. Uh, heck, in the keynote, uh, it's actually not a secret, Satya Nadella and Ginny Rometty will both be up on the main stage there. And just my perspective, you were talking about hybrid cloud. Mm. As you said, Red Hat Summit, I've been for many years, that hybrid cloud, that adoption through both OpenStack at the infrastructure layer and up to the application with OpenShift, something we've been hearing for years, and you're right, the, the general themes seem to echo and resonate here as to what I've been hearing at Red Hat. Can you help expand a little bit, the, you know, the conversations you're having here. I, I love you talking about some of that app modernization, uh, oh, you yeah. know, analytics that are going on there. Um, you know, how does that fit into the ready architectures that uh, Dell's, Dell's offering? Sure, well, you know, I, I, I represent our, our storage business unit, so a lot of times uh, the conversations I'm having over there at the, at the booth are kind of revolving around storage and uh, storage, storage growth, how, uh, how data is expanding, how do we deal with the scalability of that, how do we deal with uh, uh, persistence of storage and containers for stateful applications, things of that nature. But, you know, really at the end of the day, uh, as I'm listening to some of the other conversations that my colleagues are having over there, it's really about how do we how do we get work done? How do we how do we now move into these areas where you know where we we need that cloud-like experience, not just uh, in a public cloud or even in a private cloud, but everywhere that uh, that we touch infrastructure, we t we need to have that simplified cloud-like experience. Yeah, so just you, you point on you know, your subject area, talk about the containerization and what's happening in storage pieces. Give us that layer between the infrastructure layer because, mm -hmm. uh, let me see, I believe the t-shirt I saw was, you know, Linux is container, containers are Linux, so, you know, Linux has lived on Dell hardware for a long time, but any, anything that, you know, users should understand about the differentiation between, you know, whether they were bare metal or virtualized in the past, and 
and containerized environments in the in the in today. Sure. Yeah, well, you know, I like to say that you can't spell Red Hat without storage. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know that that's particularly true, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah. So you know, storage is near and dear to my heart. But uh, really, at the end of the day, it's you know, you, you can't have storage sitting in an island. It has to integrate and be collaborative with the rest of the portfolio that we're expanding out for our customers, you know, solving real real issues, real problems. And so, you know, we, we've been watching industry trends and, you know, certainly these are, these are things like that from an industry we've been looking at over the past five, 10 years. So nothing new, but we see the evolution of, of certain things, like for example, you know, developers and data analysts, data scientists, um, you know, these people are really charged with going out there and making dramatic differences, transforming their companies, their organizations. And, you know, as, as that transformational application service development or, uh, or bringing back uh, insights on data is really integral to a, co uh, a company's ability to transform or, uh, or differentiate in the industry, they have to be much, much more agile. And it seems that you know, they are more and more taking over uh, a lot of the role that you know, we would normally see traditional IT uh, managers making a lot of the purchasing decisions. A lot of uh, the industry trends show that these, these folks, developers, data analysts, are actually making some of those IT decisions now. And of course, everything is really de being developed as cl cloud native. So we see cloud native as being more the new norm. And if you kind of look at the uh, the expansion of uh, of data, you know, Lisa Spellman a couple of days ago said, "Hey, you know, look, we've seen uh, data double in the past two years, but we're only using two percent of that data." Two percent. Two percent. Wow, it's not very much. Yeah, and and uh, if you look at IDC uh, mentioned that the data sphere has now grown to over 33 zettabytes. A zettabyte is a billion gigabytes, so put that into perspective, right? Uh, 33 zettabytes with, uh, by 2025, they project that we're going to grow to 175 zettabytes. Now, how can we make better use of that data? A lot of that data is coming from uh, IOT type applications. You know, you, you look at trends, uh, traffic trends, and how that might be correlated to weather activities or other events that are going on, or archeological digs, or you know, all sorts of just information that is brought back. How do we make best use of, uh, of that information? And so, the need for scalability in a hybrid cloud environment has, has become more and more of a key industry trend as uh, the data sphere continues to grow. And I think across all three of those, uh, that's really driving this, this need for hyperconvergence. And not just hyperconvergence in the traditional sense. You know, we've, we've seen hyperconvergence uh, in the field for probably about five, 10 years now. But um, you know, initially it was kind of a niche play and, uh, and was based on appliances. Well, the past two years, you've seen the Gartner reports on hyperconvergence hyper really talking about how it is moving and evolving to more of a software-defined nature. And in fact, in, in the past uh, magic quadrant around hyperconvergence, you see Red Hat show up. Something that is probably not known that Red Hat has hyper-converged offerings. It's something that actually, we, we didn't get into it just because you know, the analysts were suggesting it. We had customers come to us and they were trying to put together Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Red Hat Virtualization, storage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with varying degrees of, uh, of uh, success with that because they were doing it more or less as a project. And so we took upon ourselves to develop that put it into a product, and you know, start to develop it with things like Ansible for deployment management. Uh, we have uh, dedupe and compression with our virtual data optimization products, uh, virtual GPUs, et cetera. So 
we're really in that space now too. Yeah, so Michael, I mean, it, it really from our standpoint, it was a natural extension of what happens. If you look at what hyperconvergence was, it was simplification, and it had to be tight integration down at the OS level or the virtualization level. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we first wrote our research on it, we called it server SAN, because it was the benefits of storage area network, but built at the server level. So we said, those OS manufacturers now, I have to admit, I called out VMware and Microsoft, the ones that I considered the biggest ones, but it was a natural fit that Red Hat would look at in that environment. And if you look at the leaders in the, in the marketplace today, you know, you know, we're here, VMware's here, you know, their software is piece, you know, Nutanix has tra transitioned you know, to be a software company. Uh, so yeah, welcome to the party. It's been, it's been a fun ride uh, you know, to, to watch that over the last five years. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about customers in the spirit of collaboration. You just mentioned sort of the, the entrance into HCI is being really driven by the voice and the actions and the needs of Red Hat customers. You guys have three major pillars, themes that you have been delivering at Dell Technologies World. Talk to us a little bit about this and how your customers are helping to drive what you're delivering here and what you'll be delivering in the future. Yeah, certainly, I mean, that's the whole open source model. And, you know, we don't, we don't just contribute to the open source community, but we develop uh, enterprise grade infrastructure solutions for customers based on the open source way. Yeah. And so, essentially, you know, as I think of it, you know, these market trends that, I'm, that I was talking about, it's not that it's not that we're leading them or that they're, we're following them, it's we're tightly integrated with them. Because all of these industry trends are, you know, are being formulated as, as we're in progress. And it's a great opportunity for, for Red Hat to really express what we can do with our customers, with our partners, our developers, uh, the folks that we have on our staff that are working directly in the community. You know, most, most products that we work on, we're the number one contributor for. So it's, uh, it's all very special uh, opportunity for us. I would say, you know, from uh, a storage perspective, what we've really focused on uh, this year is around three main pillars. One is around uh, data portability, for those application portability projects that we see in OpenShift. So being able to uh, offer an enterprise grade persistent storage for stateful applications that are running in these containerized environments. Uh, another area is around that hybrid cloud scalable storage. And, and this is something that, you know, being able to scale that storage to hundreds of petabytes is kind of a big deal. <laughs> and especially as we see a lot of uh, the workloads that we've been working uh, with customers on around data analytics and now uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, those types of uh, data lakes type projects where we're able to, uh, by using OpenStack or OpenShift, we're able to do uh, multi-tenant workforce uh, workload isolation of the work that all of these people are doing while having a shared data context underneath with, uh, with Red Hat's up storage. All right. Um, and then you know, the third is around hyperconvergence, and I think we touched on that already. Yeah, so Michael, before letting you go, I have yes. to touch on the hot thing that everybody needs to, to, to uh, understand what's going, the ripple that will be felt throughout the industry. And I'm not talking about a certain $34 billion pending acquisition. <laughs> constant in the last, you know, most of my career, there has been a certain logo uh, that uh. I would see at every conference, and that red hat that I got my first one, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago. Uh, so the shadow man has been deprecated, and there's a new red hat logo. Oh yeah, yeah, and we, uh, we, just, we just brought out the new logo today. So, <laughs> great segue into, actually it was last night, uh, they pulled down the old logos, they put the new logos on, on uh, the buildings, pretty much around the world. I think it's May Day in Europe, so maybe some of that, that will happen tomorrow, or trying to think of what time it is, probably tonight. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great new logo, and it's, you know, our old logo's been a, was around for 19 years, since 2000. And, um, you know, it came back from a, a lot of feedback, from, uh, from customers, but also from people who didn't know Red Hat, didn't know what we did. And quite honestly, some of them said that, you know, Shadow Man looked a little sneaky. <laughs> I guess in the rise of all of the cyber challenges, maybe they're right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we have a new logo just launched today. Uh, very proud of it. 
looks, uh, you know, we're looking forward uh, to, uh, to working with everybody in the industry and, um, and go forward with all these new, wonderful uh, opportunities that we have together. I, I look forward to <laughs> pointing out to all the vendors that they're now using the old Red Hat logo, yeah. just like they do for every other vendor in the space when it changes. As of how many hours ago? <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see and hear what Stu and team uncover at the summit next week in terms of the impact mm -hmm. of this brand. We thank you so much for your time, Michael, Absolutely. joining Stu and me on theCUBE. I guess it is this afternoon of day three. It's hard to tell, right? It's all blending in together. But we thank you for your time and your insight. Thank you very much, and see you next week, Sue. Exactly. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from day three of our coverage of Dell Technologies World 2019. Thanks for watching.